It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, how are you today? Welcome to my shop. Today, we are going to actually do something instead of just me sitting here rambling. I'm working on my shop today with her some eBay clients that uh, wanted some cardboard play sets. If you've ever seen some of my videos, you see my, my table behind me usually has stuff there and my projects and whatnot, if anybody can recognize them. I make uh, part of what I do on eBay is I make cardboard playset backgrounds for the vintage Star Wars Kenner line. Um, like this. Like this is one here. If you're a Star Wars collector, you know what this one is. It is the Rebel Command Center cardboard playset. This happens to be my, my original for my own collection. But I make these backgrounds. And uh, if you know what this is, this is the base that goes to it. This also goes to the Hoth Ice Planet set. And uh, they painted it brown and put it on land of the Jawas. They reused this quite a few times. But this is just made out of cardboard. And it just slides right in there. And it makes a great display area. Um, when we were kids, this is what we had to play with. And uh, we used our imaginations. And it was a lot of fun. This isn't really one of my favorite ones, though. This is just the one that was easiest to grab off my shelf. I just wanted to show you. But today I'm going to show you how to make this. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to mention that Kenner came out with quite a few cardboard play sets. Kenner wasn't the only ones to do it. There was uh, plenty of other cardboard. Barbies did it. Uh, I think G.I. Joe might have. Um, and you don't see them very much today. There's a few here and there that pop up, uh, but you don't really see them anymore. I think the best cardboard play set ever made, uh, made, made, made out of cardboard would have been this uh, 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 Pal Toy Death Star sitting behind me. <laughs> Excuse me. I just chugged a whole thing of root beer. Okay, let's go over the supplies. The supplies you're going to need are easy. You could find them at any Walmart. Um, you're going to need, of course, you're going to need paper. And you think, oh, well, I can just go get some photo paper and use that in my printer. And no, it's not going to work. Uh, believe me, I've tried. I've tried almost every kind of paper you can buy at Walmart. And it doesn't work. First of all, it's too small. Eight and a half by 11 is not really big enough to do this. Um, I started out doing that, and then I put them together like pieces of a puzzle, but there were a lot of seams in it, so we're trying to avoid seams. They're not unavoidable. Some some of them, you're going to have to have seams in them. My play sets do have seams here and there, but I, I've learned to hide them over the years. But paper is very important. If you use photo paper and uh, nothing else, your, uh, your ink will smudge. When you go to put it on the cardboard, it will smudge. And uh, when you when we we're going to push down on it like we did for the... Uh, uh, card, card backs for the figures. You have to get the right kind of paper that will accept the ink and also a clear coat on top of it. So the paper I finally figured out worked is this. And you can get this at any, any Walmart, your supermarket, in the craft section. It's just poster board. Just poster board paper. I try to find the thinnest I can because if you notice, they're all different. I had to go through a few brands to figure out which one worked well too. This I got at Walmart. It's actually the cheapest stuff you can get. It's really flimsy and it'll fit in my inkjet printer. Uh, printers are also all different. In this case, uh, for this paper, my, my printer only goes to eight, eight and a half inches wide. So we're going to cut this into eight and a half inch strips. Uh, luckily, I don't have a limit on how long the piece of paper can be. Some printers do. Uh, I believe a Dell printer only lets you go up to 14 inches long. So your printer is going to matter too. So your paper, poster board, and your printer is going to matter. I don't know about other printers. I've never tried them. But so the first thing, obviously, paper. That's our poster board. Okay, after you find your paper, you're going to want to find the cardboard. This is just a standard sheet of regular cardboard insert. It's regular corrugated cardboard, regular thickness, just like any normal box you would get. Um, maybe a package in or something. Um, you can find these on the internet or you know if you just get a really good moving box you can cut sections out of that and use it uh like i said this i found a distributor after a long after a long time because i make a lot of these i've literally made hundreds of them and i got a good deal on this guy that paid um for 100 sheets of this i think i'm paying 45 dollars, which isn't too bad so but it's just standard corrugated cardboard so that's your cardboard you're going to need the glue to glue the picture to your cardboard. I recommend this. This is what I use for my uh, card backs, too. It's 3M Super 7 multi person multi Still tripping over my words after five years, huh? Multi-purpose adhesive. <laughs> it's a spray glue. And you can find this at a lot of grocery uh, hardware stores, uh, department stores, 
I hate, I really hate plugging Walmart, but that's where I got this. And then, uh, like I said, I mentioned, we're going to clear coat. Uh, clear coat is very important. Uh, this brand works. Uh, I don't like plugging Walmart, but I keep plugging Walmart because it's the only place to go where I live. This won't melt your ink. Some clear coats out there, when you spray it on, it'll make the ink all run together. And I call it melting, but it just, it just, it ruins your pictures. This doesn't seem to. This is uh, Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover. In this case, I'm holding the gloss clear in my hand. But you can also use the semi-gloss clear. They're both about the same. This has a little let glo less gloss. Do not use the this brand, the matte gloss. That will melt your ink. But these two have been good to me. So that's about it for the supplies. That's all you're going to need. Now, like I was saying about the printers, you have to check your printer settings and see if it, what size of paper, the biggest it can accept. It'd be really nice if we all had ones that will print 24 inches wide by 24 inches long. We wouldn't have no scenes at all. But most people don't have that. I've got this little Canon uh, inkjet printer. It's been doing since my third one in five years. I go through them. But they are a good printer for what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you how to piece this together uh, coming up right now. So before we get into me showing you how to do the printing and everything, I, I, I forgot to mention about the images. Um, people have been asking me lately, where can I get the images? Where can I get a scan? Will you send me a scan of yours? Will you send me your scans? Um, no, I won't send you my scans, but they are on the internet. They're not hard to find. Um, I found my, I found one or two on the internet, and I had to touch it up a little bit to make it, my, make it better. But uh, if you need scans for these play sets, you know, uh, they're on the internet, so just go ahead and search for them. Um, the one I'm showing you how to do today is actually one of my own originals. It's a custom, so because I don't want to get copyright striked or anything like that. Because when I did that card card back one, uh, I actually got like copyright striked on it. I'm like, okay, or copyright claim. It wasn't. I keep saying strike. Um, I, I've got a copyright claim on it. And I'm like, well, okay, because the one I did have on there was a copy. So uh, I just wanted to get that out there and let you know these. If you're looking for these uh, pictures, scans, whatever. Uh, they're, they're out there somewhere on the internet, I promise you. Just be diligent and you will find them. Uh, so, okay, let's get into how we're going to print these. And we'll get started out doing it. I'm going to use Paint Shop Pro. Uh, I know it's an older program, but my, the print, the, I have a dedicated computer for printing only. And it's, uh, it's Windows 7. And Paint Shop Pro is what I, what I learned on. Photoshop's going to work too, but I'm not a Photoshop guy. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know everything because I don't. All right, let's get, let's get moving. Now, this is the easiest way I can explain to how to print this out. Um, I went into my printer settings, and every printer is different, so there's really no sense in me showing you how. Well, I will show you real quick. Uh, this is Paint Shop Pro 9, by the way. And I went up to uh, File, Print Setup, and Properties. And then I selected the size of paper I was using, which is right down here where my cursor is, if you can see that. In this place, it was Custom. I clicked on Custom, clicked on Custom. I'm using 8.5 which is the widest my printer will go, by 22 inches, which is the, the size I cut the paper to. So uh, let's get out of that. Get out of that, get out of that. As you can see, when I put the, the piece on there, here's my paper size. I put the piece on there. It's too big for the paper. So <clears throat> we're going to print this in sections. And as you can see, I have it lined up. All this stuff down here will not print. And so uh, let's just continue with that, and I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, as you can see, the design isn't completely on that paper as it's supposed to be, but it won't fit. So, we're going to print this in sections. That is the top half of the place that we're making. I just want to show you how that comes out. Now, I'm going to show you what we do for, this, for the bottom half. Now that we got the top half printed out of our design, we're going to, we need to print that bottom half. Now, I need two of these little triangle things over here, so I'm going to leave that there. But I'm going to take my picture, and I'm going to drag it up. And I'm going to put the rest of the picture on the non-printable area down to just above what actually printed out. So where my cursor is here, that's all going to print out for me. And I'm trying to make it a straight line as possible. And now it is time to print that. And now you can see, just like on the computer, I'm printing out the rest of the bottom of the playset. And I'm going to show you how to trim that. And well, I'm going to show you the next step. Trimming is not the next step. So on to that. So these are our two printouts, and as you can see, it's starting to make the playset. You can see how the shapes are and everything, but as you can see, they're in two pieces. 
Now, there's one step that I haven't showed you that I meant to show you, and that is clear coating. When that ink dries, and I've already done this off camera, unfortunately, so I'm just going to have to explain it to you. When that ink dries, you're going to hit it with some clear coat. And what that does is it, it, it'll keep it from smudging. It also keeps it from fading. A lot of people don't know. But you don't want to use just any clear coat. You get, don't want to get the dollar store clear coat. Some clear coats will actually melt the ink, and then it won't look good. But, uh, yeah, so we clear coat it, and then now it's laying on the table drying. And uh, I will tell you what I'm using in the next, that next segment here when I get back to the, cam uh, the, the camera. So I got a little uh, tightness here with my camera. I don't have a lot of room to work, so I'm just going to show you. Uh, here's the pieces we print out. And as you can see, here's our place and how it's going to go together. But you can see well, there's these lines here. You know, I... How am I gonna how am I gonna get this this to line up? Well, I'm gonna show you. Now, um, you're gonna need an exacto knife and a straight edge metal ruler or plastic ruler, anything with a true straight edge. I'm sure you have something laying around the house. Now, what I want to do here at this point is I want to look and how much uh, white paper do I have on th this side compared to how much white pe white paper do I have right here? This one's less. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim that off. Because when I do this, I'm going to overlap this until it matches up. And so, I'm going to get rid of the thinnest piece of white I can. In fact, I'm just going to cut this like this and set these pieces aside. Because these pieces are done for this one. Every place that's different. I'm just doing the easiest one because it will make a shorter video. So, I'm going to cut that off, set that aside. I'll use that later. I'm even going to go, just to make it easier to work with, and there I just cut that short like that so now I have my one piece that I'm working with. we're done this will be all one piece I'm going to cut this off with my straight edge and I I'm since I'm right-handed I like to turn it this way I take my ruler I put it as close to the edge as I can as close to the edge as I can at this point it doesn't have to be perfect because like I said we're going to overlap it and I take my exacto knife cut it hopefully I got it on the first try I did not I'm pushing down firmly you see I got most of it but I missed a spot here somewhere there it goes and there's a scrap throw that away we don't need that and now you see I have a nice clean edge right here now I take my other piece where did I put it over here um, I take my other piece now you would think oh well they're just gonna line up like this you know end to end no that's not right and you can tell by the picture uh, easiest ways to see right here we're gonna slide this down until the top picture meets the bottom picture and it matches in the whole scheme of things like that and then I'm going to take my scotch tape assuming my wife didn't take my scotch tape there it is I'm gonna take a little piece of scotch tape Carefully making sure this line matches up. Tape that on one end. So this end lines up perfect over here. This, I still have a little wiggle room if I need to move it. If, as you can see, right here is the line I'm looking at. I want to match this line up perfect. And there we go. Same thing on this side. A little tiny piece of scotch tape. Push down on it. And tape it. So now it's connected. Now... The bottom picture is the one that had the most on it. So it's underneath the top picture. So this picture actually goes up to about here. But here's our seam right there. So when, like I said, being right handed, I gotta turn it like this. So I'm gonna go put this ruler right along the end of the top paper. If you can see that on camera, it's right here. That's the end of the top paper. And I'm just going to make sure it's as even as I can. I'm going to put pressure on that ruler so it doesn't move. And I'm going to cut through both pieces. Both pieces. Hopefully that goes through the first time. It didn't. That's why I'm putting pressure on my ruler not moving up there, guys. Now I cut through both pieces. And as you can see on this one, here's the leftover from the bottom picture. See all that? That's, you know, we can't use that. That's that's overprinted I guess you could say it's uh we didn't need it so I'm gonna take that off and that's good 
and then the little bitty overlap piece here. We're going to take that off, throw that away. We don't need that either. Now, here's why we did that. It's lined up now, and the, the cut matches exactly. Kind of like a puzzle piece here, but there's no curves and twists to it. But when I go to put that together, that's going to hide that seam so much better than if I just went end to end on the pictures. And that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to put this on the cardboard. So let me show you how to do that. Now with the cardboard, look at your corrugated cardboard. You'll notice there are actually two sides to it that are different. As you can see the grooves in this side, and then turn it over, the grooves aren't so pronounced on this side. This is the smooth side. This is what you want to glue your paper to, which we're going to do that right now. I'm going to take this, have it in the wrong direction. Also pay attention to your, to your lines. I'll show in the back here. This cardboard will easily bend this way. If I wanted to fold this in half right now, it would bend easily um, this way. Uh, so you want to pay attention to where your grooves are. If, like this particular playset is going to have a bend. It's going to have a bend in it. It's going to bend like this. So I want to make sure I have these lines going the same direction. It makes it easier to bend, easier to cut too. But like I said, we want to do the smooth side. So I'll lay my cardboard down this way. I have my play set ready. I'll do another test fit to make sure it fits on the cardboard. Make sure it'll still line up for me. And it does. It's going to fit on there nicely. Next is whenever I grab my glue. Super 7-7. Seven seven. I just realized it was mirrorized on the video, if anybody noticed that. Um, I'm going to spray this off camera. I have a little thing here next to an exhaust fan. Uh, yeah, you want to be in a well-vented area or do this outside. So I'm taking my first piece. I'm going to cover this with glue. Ooh, it's smelly. I don't know if this will come up on the camera or not. You just want a light spray on this, and that's what I've done. I've put a light spray of the glue on the back of my picture. And then we lay it flat on our cardboard, like this. And then take a nice, soft cotton cloth, something soft. You don't want anything gritty. <coughs> um, this is a terry cloth towel. <coughs> Make sure it's dirty and doesn't have any crud on it because it will mess you up. And then you're just gonna tamp it down. I start in the center and I go around the edges, not going off the paper just yet because you can get glue in your rag and that'll ruin your project too. And then last but not least, I go right up that seam. And then I turn my towel over. I'll turn my towel because I've got a little glue right there. I'm gonna turn my towel this way and set that aside. And now I'm gonna glue our second piece right here. Once again, just enough glue, just enough glue to coat, to coat it one time. It's, uh, if you put too much on, uh, it could soak through and make your, make your colors fade. Now you see I'm going to line that up the way we cut it. Gently set it down. I got my clean spot on my towel again. And I'm just going to push it down and give it a little wipe. And this works for any of the play sets you'd want to make. It's the same procedure, just has different pictures. You have to decide where you want to put your seam when you do it in Photoshop. Now I just have to let this dry, and we're going to show you how to cut it. Alrighty then. I do have these other two pieces that go with it. These pieces are going to be the bracket to hold it up. I'll do those off camera. It's the same procedure. I don't want to make this video take forever for you guys. So I'll see you in a minute. We'll show you how to cut this out. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you see that I um, always admit whenever I screw up. Well, I screwed up, and I want to show you what I did so you don't do it. Remember I said everything has to be clear-coated? If you don't clear-coat everything, it's not going to come out right. This one here has been clear-coated, and I went to put it, I went to glue it on the cardboard that I'm going to use, and when I wiped it, not a problem. This one here, I'm going to turn it over. Now, this, uh, this one is the second one that I need. And as you can see, it is smudged like crazy. Why did that happen? Because I forgot to clear, the, clear coat the second one. 
That's why you got a clear coat. So just want to throw that in there before we go to our cutting. I'm still going to use it because this is just for the video. But um, yeah, that's why you got to clear coat it. It will smear. <coughs> well, now we're ready to cut these or cut this. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. I mean, um, I wouldn't recommend using scissors. You want to get yourself another X-Acto knife. Um, if you're cutting at home, you don't have a... Uh, I'm gonna show, actually, I'm going to show you two ways to cut it. And the first way, we are going to just use our straight edge and our X-Acto knife, which is just very cut and simple. I'm going to line that up like that. Hold down my, uh, hold down my ruler really snugly. And I'm just going to cut once to score my paper pushing lightly and then twice you cut me the whole way through and it did save that for packing now um it's very important to have a very sharp exacto knife to do this that way your cut see how nice that cut came out that cuts perfect on both sides it's right right through the cardboard no fuzzies no no snags if you use a duller blade even i wouldn't even recommend i use box cutters once in a while but i wouldn't recommend it for this particular part of it because they tend to grab. So once again, just cut once, push down more. There's the second one. Off, done. Third side. Do, 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 line it up. And this is great if it's just a straight edge. But what if it's curved? What if it's curved, Bruce? What do I do? What do I do? Well, that takes a little more patience. And I'm not famous for having patience. So we're going to show you. Well, let me do this piece real quick. With the exacto knife so you can see this piece has to come out too so we're going to cut this and all these play sets are different i just picked the easiest one to do this fastest video that i could because i know nobody wants to sit here with a 45 minute video on how to do this there i cut that taking it to the edge to do this and i'm going to saw through that saw through that and there i got a nice perfect hole that i need for my playset. Now I'm going to show you how to do curved things. There's two ways to do it. They're kind of tedious. I'm off camera with what I want to do. Well, I'll just explain it right quick. What you could do is hang this part. This, this part here has to come out. All the white has to go. You hang it over the edge of your table and you gently with your X-Acto knife go up and down like a sewing machine or a saw and cut it out that way. We're not going to do that this way. I'm going to show you a different way. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, uh, if not, well, you're going to have to do it the old way. But if you're careful, it'll still come out nice. So let's uh, let's move to my wood shop, and I'll show you the second way. So yeah, I went through this real quickly. Uh, this is my homemade scroll saw I have in my wood shop, and all I'm doing is I'm just very carefully going around those edges with the scroll saw. But like I said, you can use a exacto knife and you know do it yourself. I just you know when you do a whole lot of these uh, every week, it's just easier to do it. I usually do the whole thing on the scroll saw actually, but uh, yeah, I'm just doing this on the scroll saw because it just comes out nicer. But like I said, if you have an exacto knife and it's a little patience, sit there and do it yourself. It'll come out just as good. Now I did have a camera problem. The uh, I was using a Wi-Fi camera, and it was too far away from the modem, so that's why it's a little choppy, and I apologize for that. And I was going to show you how I cut those little curvy ends out, too, which basically the same thing I'm doing right now. So, uh, you'll see here in a second, I'll pick it up. And well, as you can see, I got this all cut out now, and we're ready to go. Um, the camera kind of petered off a little bit when I was uh, using the scroll saw. But uh, it worked out just the same, just the, way, the same way. You get the idea. I cut the top, and I cut these little pieces here out with it, too. Uh, I guess I just too far away from the modem or something because that was a Wi-Fi camera. But anyway, you see we got them cut out. So um, now it's time to do the final assembly. Um, I already bent these when I was sitting here. Um, but the easiest way to bend your cardboard is with a straight edge. So this straight edge, I know that's going to bend right here. So this straight edge we're going to put under here right where I want the fold to be and I'm going to tilt it up so the corner is pushing down and I'm going to push down you can't I don't know if it's showing on camera but this is actually going to crease it okay made a nice crease let me get my wood out of the way here I, I just used a board you can use a ruler you know whatever you have laying around um, or if you're really really careful you can put it on the edge of a table and bend it down but because I want to see where it's bending 
There, that bent exactly where I needed it to. So that bent, yep, that's going to be good. And then these pieces are going to go for this particular place that I guess I can just throw this on camera right quick. I have to fiddle with it too long. I might fast forward through it. These piece one goes there. One goes. I'm trying to show you guys what this. But this is only one place. They're not all like this. This is just the easiest one. And one goes in there. And then boom, we have our place set. We switch cameras and I'll continue. So here's the place that we just finished making. As you can see, it's a lot like. It's not identical, it's my own version, but it's a lot like uh, this one, which is the Rebel Command Center. But I wanted something different, so I designed this one. And as you can see, I've got a, I've got a few of these bases laying around, these bases right here. I've got a few of these laying around. But this, again, will just fit right, right into there, like it's supposed to. And boom, there's a whole new play set or display stand for my Star Wars guys. And is it, why does it look different? Oh, it's the camera angle. But, yep, there it is. That's basically how to make any cardboard playset from this easy one all the way up to the Pal Toy Desk Store, which this thing is a monster, and it took, it takes it takes quite a few days to make one of these. But, you see, this is this is my own version. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the trash compactor works, and it's, uh, it's one of my favorite pieces, really. And uh, we have the, the gunner chair up here and the, 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 the glass I made. I made that for help with the help of a friend. And, uh, but you can go from this to this easily. It's all the same principle. They're all the same. You just have to be able to find the pictures to put them on there. And like I said, those are, those are available on the Internet. So, hey, thanks for spending some time watching my video, and uh, I know I haven't been around much lately. Trying to. I went back to work. You know, COVID's over now, so it's time to, time to be a big boy. So that's what I've been doing. I hope you guys are doing all well, and uh, we'll see you hopefully soon for another video. Take care.